Just before I was supposed to graduate from high school, I left. Went to New York, that was May of 1969. Great time to be in New York. So if you were 18 like I was at that time and you moved to New York and you weren't quite sure where gay people were, and I didn't, I just knew they were in that city, you automatically assume there's this wild place called The Village. And in Greenwich Village, you'd find them. And of course you did. I, and the place you found them primarily was around Christopher Street. So if you were poor like I was and living at the YMCA as I was with no money, your typical night, every single night, was to go to Christopher Street and walk up and down that street. And that's where you met your friends. As usual, I was walking up and down. Uh, I walked, popped into the Stonewall. So as I was standing there talking to my friends in Stonewall, all of a sudden the lights blinked. And then they blinked a second time. And I thought something was wrong. And I looked at my friend, I said, what's going on? They said, and the friend just said, oh, just another raid. Now, they might have been casual, but I'd never been in a raid of my life before. I was scared. Uh, they came in, they harassed uh, the more stereotypical people, um, the queens. Uh, they would just push them around. And I mean, I actually witnessed some older guy taking money out of his wallet and handing it to the police. In order to get out of the bar, you, they were carding each and every individual. That was their excuse to do what they were doing. And they carded me and found out that I was above 18, which was a legal drinking age and I looked like the kid next door. They had no use for me. I had no money they could extort. Uh, I didn't look stereotypical. Um, I'm sure someone said, get out of here, faggot. But I, I, I was so scared, I don't remember the exact words. Or well, I remember showing ID and them telling me to go. So I went out uh, and stood across the street. Uh, I had met a guy by the name of Marty Robinson uh, a couple weeks earlier who wanted to do something for a new generation of gay people. Uh, and he cr created something called the Action Group. Uh, there are only two of us left today who are still alive from the Action Group. Mike Laverty, who went on to be one of the founders of Lambda Legal, and myself. We're the only two surviving members at this point. Um, Marty came up to me that night as I'm standing outside Stonewall, and he said, what's going on? I said, looking very nonchalant and like, I was like everybody else. So, oh, just being raided. Um, he disappeared, uh, and later on, as people started getting out uh, of Stonewall, they created a semicircle around the door, uh, and somebody started throwing stones. Uh, I don't remember rocks being thrown and being the, as dramatic as a lot of people, or as that horrible movie makes it seem. Uh, but um, it was a riot, and. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes Marty back with chalk. And he says, right on the buildings and on the street, up and down Christmas Street, tomorrow night, Stonewall. That's really important because that became the birth of Gay Liberation Front. Probably the most important LGBT organization to have ever existed to this date in the LGBT community. Up until that point in 1969, there were no more than 100 gay activists out in the entire United States of America. GLF comes along and we decide we're going to create a gay community. Every single night we were uh, leafleting up and down Christopher Street and other areas of the village. We had regular meetings and they were open and public, not secret. So to embolden all of that, we created the first gay youth organization that existed. We created the first trans organization that ever existed. Medical alerts. Uh, um, legal alerts, a legal committee, we demonstrated. And if all of that were not enough, uh, along with Craig Robwell, we created Christopher Street Liberation Day Committee, which became the first gay pride day. And on that first gay pride day, approximately 5,000 people marched from the village to Central Park. In one year, we created a movement from 100 people to 5,000. That's the legacy of Gay Liberation Front. We defined ourselves, we created a movement, and we created a community. I'm lucky that I came from a family uh, that understood what civil rights was. Uh, my grandmother took me to my first civil rights march when I was 13 years old. So I knew what the fight for social justice was all about, and something deep inside of me said, you know what, why not us? Um, so I was along for the ride, and I wanted to be one of those drivers in that bus.